<laughs> we're, not, we're not even because it's dark, remember? Look out the side. Oh, oh good. <laughs> and the cahoot's not going to work so well. I'll talk about it later, I'll put it right at the end for a reason, um, but it's, it's not going to work so well for anyone who's um, who's jumped onto Zoom on their phone because you'll need your phone to to, uh, okay. to, to to do the cahoot as well, but that's all good, we, we're gonna, we'll are going we do it at the end, it's a bit of fun at the end as well, but um, look, it's after 7 o'clock and still a few people coming in, but um, we've, got 20, we've got 24 people online at the moment, so that's, yeah, that's not a bad turnout um Look, we just thought we'd put together the uh, this presentation. Oh, not present. It's actually not even a presentation tonight. It's more of just a uh, just a bit of a catch up um, to, to see how everyone is, and uh, you know, just make sure we're you know, checking in and catching up, and haven't really seen each other for a long time. Um, but also just to go over a few things. If you've got any questions or want to chat about anything, you know, rugby related or not rugby related, um, plus I'll just I'll just gloss over a few things that uh bubbling away in the background as well um that'd be pretty cool too but has uh has anyone got anything at the moment that they um particularly wanted to talk about or, or, you know, or how's everything going for everyone all pretty good yeah the, everything's going okay here uh uh just like to thank pat and your, yourself for keeping us all um up to date with everything um yeah, that's me. Don't thank me, Evan. I've done nothing. <laughs> I've seen the see emails. I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um. Well, we get information come in, and then we send the information out. So it's yeah. Sometimes we have lots of information. Sometimes we have no information. But I guess it's the same for a lot of people at the moment. It's uh, mm. it's a matter of a waiting game. Um, but you know, anything that we get in, we'll you know we'll share with you guys and. If there's anything you want to know, it's a good opportunity to ask um, and to find out. So if we can, if we've got the answer, we will we'll give it to you. But if not, then that's it, really, isn't it? So yeah. Um, are there any? Um, I was having a chat to Grant earlier, and he was uh, telling me about some of the things that he was he's been doing. Uh, so in fact, I'm going to pop everyone on mute, and then maybe if uh, if everyone just if you want to have a chat, um, just um, unmute yourself if you want to talk. Um, but Grant, you were talking about something that you were doing uh, at the moment um, to keep uh, keep fit or keep sane. You, you'll need to unmute yourself again now. This is your cue, Grant. This is your big shiny moment, mate. <laughs> I have muted you, mate. So your bottom left-hand corner uh, should be a little mute button, a little microphone. He hasn't unmuted. There we go. There we go. We can hear you. I can't. No? Oh, is that you? I bet oh, you went to the toilet. Uh, guarantee it. All right. Well, there goes Grant's shiny moment. What, anyone else want to share what they've been up to um, in terms of routines or habits or doing little uh, or training stuff or non-training stuff? Oh, well, I've been at the beach running every day. I'm as fit as I've been in uh, 30 years, so it could be the comeback. Mind you, it was thwarted earlier in the year with my uh, touch rugby exploits, but strengthening up again. It's good to hear, Craig. It's good that you're nice and close to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm with a past of thousands at the beach every day. It's pretty nice yeah. around 10, 12 o'clock today with the tide out. Yeah. Not good brilliant. running conditions. But my son, who's referee in North Harbour, <coughs> comes out, he's brought some weights and stuff, so we've got a very mini type gym here which we also use oh very good um but yeah no it's important uh like if we if we know like if, you know we've got connections with each other and um like if we you know, give each other a call or a text or just just check in on each other it's um we're probably all in the, you know all have a bit of a responsibility i guess to, uh, to look out for each other too so you know, it might, might be nice to just drop a line to your mates whether they're local or not so local uh within the club and just to just to check in every now and then it might be pretty cool. yeah i appreciate what you're, doing, what you're doing actually in front of this group um it is it is good we're trying to build a club as you say so we should try and keep this going as much as possible. It looks like we're going to be six or eight weeks again, another four weeks. 
Uh, important for us to keep connected and uh, support each other. Ah, cool. Um, is anyone who's uh, who's still working in an essential service and, and, and on the front line? Yeah, I'm still working. Reduced hours, but um, yeah. only because we're only allowed like one person in the lab, so we're alternating days. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it's actually been quite good going in every other day. The commute to work's like halved in the amount of time and breaks up the whole lockdown thing as well, which is good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. You're still working as well, Cam, at BTNZ Rotorua? Still working? Still, uh, yeah. still, still providing those uh, warrants and ventures for the essential workers? Yeah, central stuff, mate. Main, mainly trucks going on, but... All the trucks, here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, we've got reduced hours as of this week, so... Mm. But all, all good, like I say, it breaks the routine up and gets you away from screaming kids, mate. <laughs> Cam, yeah, I, I, I see that um, over the last week or so that you, there was an announcement that you and Pat and others were working on what the season might look like. Yeah. And there was an announcement that came out about focus on community rugby and schools. Can you guys yep. want to talk about a bit of that? So give us a bit of an idea of what they're thinking there. Yeah, well, Pat, maybe I could hand over to you so I'm not the one doing all the talking. He's out there in the sun without a hat yeah, on. Yeah, he is. I know. He needs, he needs to screen up. He's going to get a bit sunburned <laughs> out there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, the, the focus or the push is actually coming from New Zealand Rugby. They're really keen to have some form of community rugby going whenever that may be. Uh, and the other thing that they're really keen on, and I suspect that it's a um, more of a financial motivation than anything else, is that uh, all provinces are absolutely keen as mustard to get some form of minor 10 cup going as well so what we've been doing in the background is um, working quite closely with all the chairpersons of the various volunteer committees uh, to try and keep them engaged connected uh, i suppose keep the fire going more than anything else and see what some sort of competition structure would look like if we came out of lockdown uh, and then gave ourselves a four or five week window to get up and running and get ready uh, for potentially a July, August, September window of some form of community rugby game. Uh, and also at the same time, potentially run side by side a Mitre 10 Cup competition. Now we don't really know what that looks like at this stage, uh, none of the committees have been asked to put together any form of competition structure as yet. In fact, the Senior Club Working Group had a meeting today, and all we're really looking at at this stage is the current health of our clubs, sort of broken down into three categories, player health, coach health, and club health. Uh, and so that, that's basically all we're really doing at this stage. But the potential is if things keep going the way they are, uh, there will be some form of community rugby in that July, August, September window. Yeah, and nobody's was, holding their breath at this yeah. stage, right? No, no hey, one's Pat. holding their breath. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, hey, Pat, what does that look like for school rugby? I'm just um, asking for. Is that, is that inclusive of school rugby? Yep. Uh, so the schools Hi. have got um, an opportunity to run a an eight-week competition in term three, uh, so that, that's potentially in that same window. So junior rugby would operate in the same window, secondary schools, senior club rugby, and potentially minor team cup all running at the same time. Ah, choice, okay. With all blacks, super rugby players, all participating in a minor team cup competition. Uh, and that's yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the end goal. Um, whether or not that comes off or not is up to whether or not New Zealanders can mm. follow the lockdown rules and and we get on top of it. Um, just just as a follow up, um, and part of that, um, Tiana will know, but some of you may not that know that the whole um, national squad has been disbanded. 
Um, the coaches that were coaching, their contracts have been um, torn up, for want of better words. And I know Bryce and Homer and the others are under a fair amount of pressure to keep things going. So every everybody is being hit here. Yeah. And that would have covered a number of camps for the squad and others. Activity. So, Tiana, you've had a very short um, life there so far. <laughs> That's a pretty one, so I'm sure it's not the end of it for you. Nah, um, they're not even sure about the positions in no. uh, 2021, but um, priority is going to be given to those <clears throat> in the squad, and then we'll see from there. But oh, I felt sorry for Bryce. He looks so gutted announcing the news. Mm. He looked like he was about to break down a bit to be honest but um yeah everyone's in a hard boat especially those who are working full-time in that in that squad so <clears throat> but there's um yeah there's some support being offered for those that have totally lost all their income yeah, yeah so it's, it's good it's good community banding together just supporting each other that's part of that activity yeah thanks for that man um <laughs> No, we, uh, we had a. I had a good chat with Nick, and he's going to give it, give it a good opportunity to put some resources together and get, get everyone still motivated around doing some analysis work and looking at old footage, designing, um, oh, I don't know, some sort of an analysis type looking questionnaire so that you can and video so that you can still analyze your work on through other refs and other games and footage and whatnot so there's still stuff to be done so to say it hasn't all died down it's quite exciting the growth mindset yeah, mm, yeah. but there are exactly there are silver linings you know you look at um the opportunities that you can take to i guess do a bit of you know, the extra, uh, the learning and and uh, the, you know, take take the time to do the the off field stuff that you wouldn't have as, mm. much, as much time to do, and that's for anyone really. Um, yeah. So much opportunity for us to do, sort of, get, you know, do some reading and watch some videos, or sort of dive dig a bit deeper into some topics that we might not, you know, that we might not have had the time and opportunity to do that before. So yeah, it's uh, the opportunities here for sure. Mm. Yeah. Um. Just on actually, just on that, is there anything that uh, anyone has particularly been doing uh, that they wanted to share around their around anything refereeing in the in the background to either keep fit or keep training or or whatnot? Grant, you with us now? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, mate, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm a bit like Craig. I've been heading down the beach every day and probably doing twenty to thirty minutes of just uh, forty minute forty meter shuttles and doing a lot of biking, biking around in circles where I live. So um, I think the neighbours are getting a bit sick of me at the moment, but um, I'm sort of biking up the streets and just, yeah, getting a bit fitter because I think, you know, when we do get back to rugby, guys, I think we need to be keeping fit, eh? Keeping well. It helps get out of the house. Um, and I've got a beautiful place where I am that I can go training. I can see the beach, White Island, so I'm pretty lucky. I'm not like Pat that's just got a... Um, what is it? Looks like the beach in the background, but it's not, is it, Pat? <laughs> he's dreaming now. He lives in an apartment, so now he has to put a put a background on the beach back there. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Uh, no, it's, um, it's good to hear. And then um, Grant, was, uh, Grant was telling me before that it, it, perhaps even opportunities that we can even share share some of the things that we've been doing. Um, so he was even saying, like, you know, if you're videoing little snippets or um sharing little things that you're doing i might even get things going that we can share on social media um just to, to create a bit of motivation or you know, for some other other club members or people who uh you know who, who match onto our page or anything like that um so yeah there's always opportunities there so um yeah now if anyone has anything that they want to share or or do that maybe we can come up with something with them in a couple of days and get uh get a bit of momentum going with some with some people as well a bit of inspiration. Yeah, I've just been um I've just been running down the street blowing my whistle enforcing the two meter rule basically. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> just because um I miss that officiousness um of refereeing, just um telling people what to do. So just <laughs> yeah. been uh, really enforcing that um as I've been going down the street. Um just telling people to get to the other side of the road and yeah. things. So um, yeah. I've 
found that's really helped. Um, and obviously in all my refereeing gear so that I can support the sponsors um, and yeah, kind of use yeah. flags, flags where possible as well. Have you, have you had to go to your cards yet? Um, yeah, it's been getting pretty close to be fair. Right. Um, on mornings? Yep. Okay. I have been working quite closely with the police um, to see if they want me to patrol the beaches and start using cards to get people out of the water. Um, but that's um, a work in progress. But that might be um, a role for those national squad guys. Is uh, that could be a, a supplementary income is um, enforcing uh, beach patrols. So just start uh, putting it on the table. You're on tea. <laughs> I've missed your shit talk, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, too good. Too good. Ah, awesome. All right. Does anyone else have anything they want to particularly share at this moment around uh, the stuff they've been doing? Bit of a knife and floor, a bit of a catch up at this point. Silence is golden. Fantastic. Uh, I might use that little segue that you got had there, uh, Sam. Um, I did actually have the uh, the whole idea of the, of a whistle challenge. I know you love blowing your whistle, so um, I've got with me a uh, a whistle, brand new, as you can see. I haven't opened it and put it back in the box. Um, I can't demonstrate this because I've got um, both my girls are asleep in, in the adjoining rooms, and I don't think my wife would be too happy. This would be a very short meeting if I demonstrated this. <laughs> um, but I thought we'd throw out a bit of a whistle challenge. Um, so the challenge is that you have to play a song uh, using your whistle, and it has to be recognisable as re as recognisable as possible. So. The challenge is maybe we'll um, either send them in via some kind of way, either through Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, email, whatever you want to send them in, you know, in little clips in, either video or audio or whatever, um, and see how see how accurate you can play a tune on your whistle. And maybe we'll share them, and I'd say either depending on the number of entries we get in, either this this time next week or the week after, uh, if we need to run it for another week. Um, We'll uh, we'll vote for the the winning the winning uh, entry and to to get a uh, a matte black um, thunderer uh, fifty two and a half that same that Ben O'Keefe uses. So if uh, you're if you're keen oh, to give yeah. that a go, um, I won't be able to ship it until uh, until after the lockdown because it's a non essential good. But you know, <laughs> you can drop it by when you drive past. But... Oh, exactly. You know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm driving past on the way to the uh, to pick up some essential goods, right? <laughs> Out in, out in Pakistan or Rotorua or wherever the winner might be. <laughs> Too good. Uh, so we'll throw that out there, guys. A uh, bit of a whistle challenge. So yeah, send me all your all your best whistle clips and get some practicing in. And I know uh, Sam will be a happy man if you do. <laughs> um, guys, I just thought I'd share a couple, a couple of things we've flown it around uh, just lately in might have seen in the media or on social media um, around some of the law application guidelines uh, that World Rugby have released. Um, so we won't have no intention of going digging into them right now. Um, it's more just to raise the awareness of, of what's out there. Um, so you'll see that um, if, you, if you dig into the law, World Rugby law website um, and go to the law application guidelines section, there's uh, one that's come out the last few days or weeks or so. Um, and that's around refereeing the breakdown. So, with it being a law application guideline, it's not a it's not a change in law. It's not a no, no new laws. Nothing's been rewritten in the laws. Um, it's more just the the way we enforce it. Uh, so, if you click into, I might do a share. Is what's been shared on my can you see what's been shared on my screen right now? Is it still is it still the presentation? Yeah, we can see it. You got the website up. Website, cool, awesome. So, um, so if you click it, if you get in there, uh, you'll see it breaks down each part of uh, of refereeing at the breakdown. Um, so, go through um, tackle and ball carrier, all the roles and responsibilities, first arriving player, as videos, statements. Um, so, I guess you know a bit of isolation uh, education uh, might be to have a good look through that, um, watch the videos, try and get your head around uh, some of these things. Um, and I'm sure that at some point in the next week or two, we'll tee up an opportunity to uh, use the breakout rooms feature in Zoom to have little conversations of, about what we've seen um, and what we understand about it um, and any takeaways we might have. Um, the other one was the decision-making framework for high tackles. Now, that's been out since last year. 
However, we haven't had an opportunity to apply that at community rugby yet. Um, this would be the first time, uh, the first season to apply that. However, um, again, it's um, another law application guideline. The video is probably the best thing to help me understand it. Um, because the framework itself can be quite um, appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you, if you if you have a look at that, and then again, we'll have an opportunity at some point in the next uh, few weeks to to break it down ourselves and form some sort of understanding for us as Bay Plenty Community Rugby referees. Um, and I think that would be uh, uh, the best way to approach that. But um, does anyone have anything they want to share on either of those things, or questions, comments, concerns? You want to raise your hand there, Pat, or are you just waving? Um, I, from my perspective, this is a really good way of practicing your refereeing. We talked about that at a couple of the sessions we've had already. And one of the things we don't necessarily do well is practice our refereeing between Saturday to Saturday. Mm. And that includes your training, but not many of us would go out and do simulations or anything. And this can be included in your practicing, looking at tackles, what would you make, look at what they've decided, all part of that thinking process to, to keep keep being to be maintained through the through the lockdown period. So I think it's great that you've got this up here. Cool. Cool. Um, sweet. So just, yeah, so just maybe just use that on your own back just to have a little look through and try and get your own understanding of that at the moment. Uh, that'd be cool. Um, gear. Gear was the other thing I wanted to share with you. So we have actually had most of the gear arrive just prior to the lockdown. <laughs> um, some of it's at, um, well, most of it's with um, Grant. Uh, Wilson and some of it's ended up at Pat's house because um, that's where the delivery ended up because he lives right next to the union now so um, but yeah we've got a good good amount of gear that luckily we had the opportunity to place the order and get in uh, this year um, some of that also includes some gear that we're going to put up for, for purchase as well for sale um, so we're going to um, I'm going to be working on getting that up on the website um, ASAP uh, so a couple of the things were, uh, yeah, so we've got caps and beanies, um, which have arrived as well as um, singlets as well, which are made out of the same material as the, as the training tops. Um, yeah, I guess it's a similar, similar material, isn't it, to our, to our polos, uh, not quite the same. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll get, we'll get, I'll suss out the, what the prices will be for those uh, and I'll create, you know, put those up for sale on, on the Bay of the Rugby website. Um, again, won't be able to distribute anything until after the lockdown, um, but at least we can get those orders in if anyone's pretty keen on having some of those. Um, we've also got uh, hoodies and matching track pants as well for those. Um, do have a limited supply of the track pants. Uh, I was a little bit unsure as to what demand would be for those, but we've got a good supply of hoodies. Um, again, they haven't actually arrived just yet, um, so I imagine they'll arrive after the lockdown. Um, I think they've arrived into the country, but haven't been sent down just yet. So we'll just wait on those, but no, I'll, I'll uh, get those on the website and get, get those out to people, um, available to people as well. Um, we'll, also look, we'll also look to see, uh, uh, depending, you know, we'll look at our whistle stocks as well, but also look to see if we can pass on the pricing that we get uh, for our whistles as well. Because I know that people looking to go buy a whistle, um, it can be sometimes a little pricey. Those thunderers can cost uh, upwards of, you know, 18 20 bucks or thereabouts um hopefully we can provide those as well for a little bit cheaper for our members so um yeah we'll see if i can get those up on the on the website too to, to sell you want have any questions about about the gear at all of oh, the purchasing gear so i'll talk a little bit about um actual just other gear as well but anything about the purchasing gear at all no cool um in terms of other gear um so for this year we've got you would have seen in multiple times that i've mentioned we've had got new sponsors on board so uh we've got back a jersey sponsor generation homes and we've got short sponsor uh roofing industries um so that's that's really cool that they've come on board and uh don uh don got those guys signed up um prior to the lockdown which was awesome uh so that's all signed up and locked in we've got generation printed already onto the back of our jerseys um and now the short order is now underway that we've got um roofing Roofing industries involved as well. Um, what it will mean though is we will need a, a switch out of all, of, uh, so we'll need to get in all shorts, all jerseys uh, this year. 
So it might be a nice opportunity uh, during the lockdown to to go through any any old any kit you've got lying around. Um, so any any referee jersey um, that's uh, yeah it, it has not been printed this year uh, has to have, will have to come back in. Uh, for those that those ones that are still in good enough nick will get the logos printed onto them. Uh, those that ones that aren't will uh, make sure that they are passed on to people who can do with them a bit more than us. Um, but either way, we can't have uh, older jerseys with old logos, particularly things like Coast Homes and uh, Eastpac running around out there anymore. Um, so we do need to make sure we get get those in. So have a little, uh, maybe a little sort through your gear um, while you've got the op- when you've got the opportunity. Uh, and and once the lockdown lifts, we'll arrange to get those um, get that gear into your local um, into your local areas. So we'll make it nice and make that transition nice and easy. Um, and then we'll get the uh, the on field gear out to those those who need it as well. So is that the same with um, sure. tracksuits too, Cam? Uh, tracksuits don't have any any branding on them. So um, some of them have got funeral homes on them. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that would be yeah, it's, a good, it's a good point. If you do have a a tracksuit, or if you have any gear that has old logos, so the only current sponsors that we have are JMC Generation uh, Samurai, who make the gear, uh, and Roofing Industries. So if you have any other sponsors on any other gear, um, it would be wise to let us know. Um, I, again, fans, Cam? It might be legacy on them. Yes, that's it. That's it. Um, legacy, track, legacy funerals. Legacy funerals. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I suggest. Look, what what we'll do is I'll format it. Like we'll come up with a good way of yeah. If you do have the stuff, it might be a good good idea to sort through it, have a good look at your gear, and just so that when I do send something out to get a good picture of what's out there, um, we'll form a good plan as to how we're going to switch that out. Because we do have a do do get a good good supply of uh, tracksuits, um, and as well. So uh, we'll look through how we're going to manage that distribution and and, and switch over to. Um, that's for but, as well, Cam. For shorts, yeah, shorts as well. So shorts will be, yeah, sorry, good point. Shorts, anything like that. Any shorts, sh- shirts, uh, on-field shirts, that is. Um, polos will be fine. Um, don't think there was any, ever any branding on the polos. Um, and training tops will be fine. Um, but basically anything you wear to a club, pretty much, uh, that needs to make sure that it's up to date. Um, and we can, we can help with that. Oh, any other, um, and also, also we'll have a we'll have an online form as well for the gear requests, so to make it nice and streamlined and easy, and um, that'll be up and going by the time we hit the ground running and out of lockdown. So I'll share that with you guys. Any other questions around gear at all? Cool, awesome, brilliant. Um, cool. I uh, just wanted to wanted to share with you guys. So there's been um, out of this whole. Uh, I think let me just share another screen here. Um, all right. Okay, bear with me a second. All right. So out of this whole uh, lockdown thing, there's been a whole lot of uh, online um, education and whatnot pop up. Uh, from around, I guess, from referee clubs around the world. Um, so, here yeah, we go. Uh, so, what I've been doing, um, so we have our, um, I'll just go to our website first. So, on our website, we have our, um, we've got our calendar, which you can, which is a Google calendar. Um, so, it's uh, linked on the, on our main, on our main referees page there. Um, and within that, I've started putting in, um, not just our, um not just our meetings but also ones that are other ones that just pop up as well that could be of good professional development referee development or anything like that some of them are over in australia other parts of new zealand um uk so as an example um after this call tonight in about half an hour there's um there's a session with david galbraith who's a sports psychologist and jay carter he's a high performance golf coach um they're doing a facebook live podcast um it's around it's around courage and how to uh um, I guess how to bring out courage in yourself and others as well. Um, so it's more of a um, per, uh, personal skills and personal development type uh, type thing. But it could be those who are interested and keen. Um, you can head onto the calendar page, and I've linked put all the links there and everything. So 
Um, yeah, again, like for example, like tomorrow morning, like for those who are mad keen, like there's uh, something over in the um, over in the UK um, about refereeing the tackle. They've got a couple of premiership referees talking about refereeing the tackle. Um, again, these are the things that if you want to pop on and you can, you know, if you're interested in doing that, I thought, hey, may as well throw them on there for the guy, you know, people who are, you know, who are interested, um, have a bit of spare time and want to look at something there. So, um, another felt where it's worth listening to. Yeah, so he was, did he, he came to the national, was he at the national score camp? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, um, no, I've heard, I've heard excellent, excellent, I've actually never had the privilege of hearing him in person, but I've heard excellent things from multiple people about, about him, so he'd be, yeah, well worth a yeah, listen. Good, good thing on, um, it's Australian thing on tomorrow night at about nine o'clock, I think it is. Yeah, um, ACT, the mm. referees. Yeah. Yeah. So I've linked that as well. So ACT referees are doing uh, like a referee profile thing. So they've got a, um, uh, a oh, who is it? Um, yeah, Dr. Claire McMahon. She, she does work around cognition and, and, and working under pressure. Um, that, and that's, uh, so ACT referees are sharing their, um, sharing their, their meetings as well there. So that's pretty cool. So I've linked that onto the, uh, onto the calendar for anyone interested. So have it always have a look and um, some of the guys listened to um the auckland one last week where angus gardner was on hmm. and there is a replay of that somewhere i was looking at it saw it today you can go actually go on and access it yeah so i've yeah so it, it was ex it was a really good pretty good uh hmm. presentation and it was nice just to have angus live and just be able to have it you know ask those questions and just hear you know it's just hear what it means you know, what, what you had in your head and what you, you know, it was about contextual refereeing and about, you know, making decisions that, you know, benefit the game and the players. And, and um, it was, um, yeah, so in, in particularly also, there was that survey that I put out uh, that a few people answered um, about what you want to hear more about. And the number one thing that, you know, so over 77% of people that responded had talked about game management as one, they want to know more about game management and how can we, you know, help game management uh, seem to be like the hot topic. So things like contextual refereeing, um, I know that this Wednesday, I just saw earlier that Auckland, um, that Auckland and Waikato, they're pairing to do um, uh, communication with players. Uh, they've got Brad Weber, uh, will be live on the Zoom chat at seven o'clock on Wednesday. So I'll pop that on the calendar too, and I'll share that yeah. out um, yeah. with, you know, amongst our, on our Facebook and email as well, um, just so you guys can have the link to that. Um, and I'll also pop these things onto onto our education page. I've been trying to keep this up to date. Okay. Um, so if you pop an education page, I'll I'll update this virtual meeting. I'll put I'll link Angus's virtual meeting on there as well. I'll link this this meeting on there, and I'll 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 tidy this up a bit so it's a bit more streamlined. But yeah, just trying to put as much information there to if people want to access it if they can. Um, I've got a very good paper about uh, managing anxiety before games and during games. So. I'll flick that to you, Cam, and you can send that around. It's yeah. it's very easy to read. It's not long, but most of us will recognise some of the symptoms that um, this guy is talking about. It's from a referee site, but it's a generic referee site focused on American sport. But what they talk about is very relevant to us. Mm. And it's these are yeah, these are good opportunities to really you know for those of you who are who have ambitions or who. I just want that extra development, um, you know, th these are these opportunities. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say that the opportunities, you know, for those people who want to take them to be able to, um, you know, dig into, you know, your development and do some uh, study around your sort of professional development side, the personal development side of things for your refereeing as well. It's a wonderful opportunity. Um, last, I'm just, just curious, has anyone attempted the law, the law exam in its new format? Pass. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah. Uh, how did, how, did, how was your experience? All good? Oh, I just, I, I rushed it a bit, but no, nah, it wasn't very good, no. Oh, I didn't necessarily mean about your... Uh, um, result. <laughs> result. Yeah, no, it's more more just the, the user experience of the, because it's a new platform that, um, so NZR have decided to bring, I guess, everything into one platform um, and host, you know, own everything. Basically, they had things stored on lots of different platforms. The law exam included. So I was just curious to see whether this was actually working uh, pretty well because I caught up with my other REOs around the country today and there was some, yeah. Um, I, I can encourage everyone to jump in there and do it. Like it certainly works in terms of you can get in, 
um, can can sit the exam. Um, there's always the the odd question which has a wrong answer or is formatted incorrectly or something like that, you know. Um, but you know, for the most for the most part, it works fine. Uh, and it's a good little marker as to you know where you are and what you know and what you don't. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to have a little look. If you look look, look at our website again, laws of the game. Um, there's a link right at the top. It says law law knowledge exam. So you can jump in there. Um, it's got all the instructions, big instruction book about how to how to log on, how to create a, an account, and everything. It's a bit more simple than the last one. Is creating an account, um, and it's also got some other little um, learning modules in there too, which is pretty cool. Um, so well worth to have a look. So when you get a chance, jump on and have a look. And uh, yeah, and also if there is anything, if you notice any incorrect uh, questions, if you notice any um, you know bugs or errors or mistakes or whatever in there, can you just um, either screenshot it or just copy and paste and let me know in an email? Because um, we'll just go, we'll just make we'll just get them fixed. And that's all that Nada wants to know. He just wants to um, he just wants to get them fixed. So yeah, just if you pick up anything, just let me know. That'd be good. Um, oh. You can't print a certificate right now. I know I do know that, but we'll make that's that's being fixed at the moment, so it's all good. It's a good time to do exams at the moment. For coaches, yep. us, anything. Yeah, it's a, a, a real good time. So um, yeah, you know, you've got plenty of time up the sleeves, guys. So now yeah. is the time to get into it and get it done. Even Steve Wheeler could do it. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, hey Grant. Um, some of us have to work ten hours a day for oh, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you drink too much coffee. Mem remember, yeah, some of us are still working. It. You're Some of us still through. working. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, so, work Saturday, we had to work Saturday, Sunday, two weekends in a row now, and we're still going. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Some, of us, so, Some of us are still working. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so if you're looking for a job, guys, there's plenty of jobs as pickers. They'll take anybody. They're desperate. <laughs> even Grant? Yeah, even Grant. You heard that, Craig. <laughs> Even you, Craig, no, not desperate. Uh, my, son's working, but... my son's working at a pack house at Topuki from 5 a 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. So he's doing his bit. There you go. Hans not tall enough to pick kiwi fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking after the short jokes. Well, Sean, Sean can get under there. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, Craig, you're a bit too old too, so they couldn't take you. Oh, my back, mate. Jeez. Oh, Craig, you're getting abused now. That's <laughs> fine. Just, just normal, mate. Yeah. yeah, come on, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's All a right, guys. Fraternity, guys. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did anyone have any? Um, did I guess sort of just uh, general, general, any other chat? Anything come to mind? Anything uh, like you know that sort of sprung sprung out for them? You know, during the call, or they heard other people talk about or say, or you know, how's how's everyone, how's everyone going in terms of? Uh, um, I guess just getting their heads around where they're at and is, is, is rugby even, I, I, I asked a general question, you don't have to answer, but is rugby even up, you know, on the radar of anyone at the moment? No, it isn't. No. I mean, yeah. we've, we've got a psychologist, Ollie Arnold, who's working for the DHB at the moment. He's really, really busy and spoke to Ollie about oh, an hour and a half ago. And now uh, I've got to give him a call after this. He's pretty stressed out at the moment with things yeah. going on. So even even the psychologists are stressed. Yeah. Um, you know, guys, we just all need to work together and stay home and just, just train and get something around your head. You know, and like I said, do exams. It's a good time to do it. Get fit. Um, and just keep safe. Hey. Yeah, definitely. And then and then, like I said at the start of the, of the call, like just connect with the guys. You know, the people that you know in the club. Uh, just give them a call, like my text. Um, if we can just have a lot of, as much of the that into connection as possible rather than just a few people um trying to do it that that you know it really helps to build the club that way and we're also looking out for each other as well it's uh it's really important to thomas so, so all the guys want to call from me do they <laughs> no <laughs> that's what i'm saying about the interconnection so just you know little groups you know <laughs> getting in touch with each other so that grant doesn't have to call you <laughs> Look, if we do know anybody struggling please reach out to them yeah. because i know it's yeah. deep. Very yeah. yeah, good point, Craig. Yep. And and also, if you you are struggling, speak speak out. It might be to your mate or mm. someone in the club or yep. ca counselling or something. Just just speak out. Well said. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you 
you know, just just say something, eh? Because it's you know, it can be a fairly iso- uh, you know, isolation, it can be a fairly isolating time as well for, for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So you don't get those sort of regular social contacts that you normally do. Mm-hmm. Um, like I would actively encourage as well, like just to, if you do get a chance, just to have a look at the at the Headfirst uh, website too. Uh, it's an excellent resource um, too. So again, it's, it's just another just another tool. Again, there's lots of different um, mm-hmm. avenues, but Headfirst is um yeah it's linked on our education page there too so um yeah it's got little uh lots of little things to be able to uh stay you know keep your keep your your mind your your mind fit too excellent bottle of red will do that <laughs> or two oh guys no, just um, one come on be sensitive um, hey Cameron. hey how's it, how's it going scott good to see you mate yeah sorry i joined late must that's all right talked about it on facebook yeah um no it was a good um good chat with angus on the other week or the other day uh, i really got a lot out of it due to the yep. fact the consensual referee inside of things yeah mm. everyone just needs to focus on their health and well-being at the moment mm. and yeah hopefully rugby gets back as soon as it can yep yeah definitely well guys um just looking at, I've got one arm at the time, and I know that a couple of people are ducking after that David Galbraith thing at eight o'clock in fifteen minutes. Um, the um, in coming weeks, so we'll look to put together a few topics and maybe some presentations or some discussions around, like I said, uh, the some of the law applications. Um, you know, I, know I, was, I was having a chat with Nick a couple of weeks ago about the high tackle framework and just actually shipping it right back and getting a, a good understanding of what we uh, what we want to understand as a as a group of Bayfinny referees rather than just following that whole big process, you know, letter for letter, word for word, which is fairly mind boggling and fairly impractical, you know, in the moment on the field. Um, so um, be good to have, maybe just digest a bit of that as well. And we can have a uh, chat about it at some point. Um, but yeah, um, so we'll, we'll, I'll stay in communication. Um, I was going to, fin- I'm going to finish the, uh, for those who are keen to stay on, I'm going to finish the um, call with a Kahoot. Um, so a bit of an online quiz. It's a very short one. Um, it's only 12 questions. Um, it's mostly just rugby related, not all rugby refereeing, just random sort of trivia facts. Um, what you will need though is you will need a separate device. Um, so if you are watching this on your phone, if you don't have another phone, then you're probably probably going to find it uh, impossible to, to do, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, if you're pretty keen to, 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 to stay on board, um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, put up the instructions soon and I'll talk you through it. Um, other than that, if there's nothing else, guys, in terms of general chat, um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll say sayonara for those people who are signing out now. Thanks, mate. Well done. Cam, can you hear me? Yeah, good stuff, Cam. Uh, yes, I can hear. Who's talking? Rolly. Hey, Rolly. Hey, How man. are you? How are you going, boy? Good, mate. I was just saying, I've got a couple of my mates here, Jim Beam and uh, Gordon's Jim. They keep busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim and Gordy. Yeah. Hey, uh, don't forget, hey, I'm still uh, looking out for, I'm still still going to be doing a couple of fines while we, uh, if possible. Okay. So we can knock on each other to the max, cooking, okay. yep. things around the house, piss the wife off. Yeah. Anything like that? Do you have, a, um, do you have a, um, a little system that you want, you want to do that at the, at the start of a meeting, or do you have any little system that you want to run run for that there at all, Rolly? Oh, I just do the start of the meeting, eh? Get it over and done with. Start of a meeting? But do you want to have any uh, fines they want to confess to at the moment? <laughs> I'll start off first. I've got a speeding ticket on Friday coming back from Auckland because I'm one of those oh. uh, workers that have to work out of town. Oh. <laughs> at least, at least yeah. you did. At least you didn't get a park two parking tic- uh, speeding tickets in the same spot like my dad did once. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm even working in Auckland because I got a uh, where that colour stole those tents they're putting permanent buildings on. I've got to go clad them. <clears throat> Oh, okay. So um, anyway, it's coming back, and I said to the cop, I said that truck just overtook me doing a hundred. He said I wasn't looking at the truck; I was looking at you. Fair enough, too. Oh, there you go. That's my two bucks. You only got any others? <laughs> um. Oh, actually, I don't know if it's a fine for me or if it's a fine for for Bryce, but I was on our, our REO conference call earlier today, and um, uh, Bryce was in full screen on uh, his head. His, his sort of his glasses on he was leaning right up to the screen talking to it and uh my, my daughter wanted, wanted into the room michelle my three-year-old and yeah you know, she didn't come to get me for lunch or whatever um normally she has no issue and knocking on the door and then just wandering in and saying papa it's time for the time to eat 
she opened the door, took long one look at the screen, then slammed the door shut and ran back down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, didn't, she didn't come back until she was attached to my wife's leg, sort of like hiding behind and looking at the screen and seeing if the scary man was there. Oh, well, okay. Bryce, I think. Yeah, $2 for scary Bryce. <laughs> yeah. $2 for scary Bryce, all right. And uh, in, in, in Adsentia, all right. There we go. Cool. Oh, guys, if anyone wants to keen, uh, stay on and do the coat, I'm going to pop it up on now. Um, thanks for joining us for the chat. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk you through it if, you, if you're staying on. So, all good. All right, I'm going. Bye. I'm going. See you, Greg. Bye, Bye boys. See you, Bye, guys. See you, all right. See you guys. Yep, see, see you. See you. See you.